While adjusting stock numbers has become a popular approach to managing drought, the alternative is investing heavily in feeding a core herd or flock. This is the approach of David Council of Dunblane near Barcaldon. It's a risk and probabilities game and so sometimes you'll be making the right decision but it may not be the best decision, you've got to learn to live with that. If I went down the road of feeding them versus the destock road and so all the neighbours have got no animals left but I, I said no, I need, I need a core breeding stock and that's what I took through the last summer of, I took about 3,000 years through. and. Uh, you know, there's a lot of little learnings about that because they ended up just getting stuck with their progeny because it didn't rain the next summer and, and uh, how to keep them alive and, and little things like that. There's a lot of learnings in that sort of thing. And I, you know, now that it's rained, I'm a hero. And if it hadn't rained, I'd be a zero, meaning, you know, would have had, you know, would have had to sell a lot of sheep into a very, very depressed market. David Council normally runs around 15,000 sheep on his 40,000 acres of Mitchell Grass Downs. Uh, drought started biting us in about 2013 we, and we've effectively been scaling down numbers ever since. 2016 we got a lot of winter rain so it, it made it feel like we were going to recover. Didn't have a full flock on our hands but um, it, it didn't rain after 2000, winter 2016 and so the next two years were, uh, year, uh, were years of downscaling and, and then last year was a, like this can't go on and I've got no dry matter in the paddock and so I took a regime of almost essentially 100% feeding everything of, of the remaining one third of the flock and, um, and, and, and now it's just rain and the green grass has just turned up. Accuracy in weather forecasting is the holy grail in managing for drought. Uh, you can pull your hair out over that because it, it's really frustrating and it's where to improve your decision making processes better medium and long-term uh, weather forecasting is really critical and so finding all those websites and trying to interpret of just how likely they are to be right um, is really really important versus historical an analysis of historical rainfall data is really really important to you. I took that risk and I've you know Cyclone Trevor has made sure that I've come out ahead on because of it uh, and if Cyclone Trevor hadn't come along um, I, I would have been, I'd be sitting here doing a lot of feeding and, and looking at the numbers and really wondering about how I'm going to pay for all of this. The big one for me is now wondering about do I, should I destock a lot sooner or put them into feedlots a lot sooner um, and how can I drive better pasture production in the, in the, in the drought recovery phase. That, that's a big one at the moment. I'm really concerned that, uh, that this these big swings in seasonal conditions that are occurring here could very well be uh, a, a manifestation of climate change. Probably another thing for me is learning about supply of feedstuffs is really important. So the lack of supply of hay was really key for, you know, I just, yeah. who would have thought Australia would run out of hay? Who would have thought that grain, you know, the grain, but it does happen, you know, East Coast droughts are East Coast droughts and yeah. that really caught us out. So there's probably quite a few of those things around the around that I'm, I'm thinking about that are, don't let, write that down and don't let that, don't forget that one. Yeah. 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 Industry, government and Desert Channels Queensland support the grazing industry in managing for change and a sustainable future on the rangelands.